so hello guys welcome back to day number 23 we are in the last week of our challenge yeah things gonna be interesting after that also because we will again go to our project videos project playlist we'll try to build some uh, nice projects vlsi projects so if you still haven't subscribed please subscribe and for sure you to like this video right okay so see we have already done with this one very low languages right we were in this last day we have done a wonderful things and that is uh, we have designed a hundred with ripple creator but today actually i won't be doing it and that is this one and this is the same only just the difference is that here they are doing vcd ripple creator and the difference between vcd and binary is that vcd is like binary coded decimal so here if we have 76 right so we code it in our binary in this way we will convert this 7 to 4 bit binary number so it will be 0 1 1 1 and then this one so it will be 0 1 1 0 so this will represent your 76 just don't be confused if you go need to convert it to your binary the true binary pure binary then this would not be similar one so here we are doing nothing different but we are just doing the yesterday's job for the vcd so try it out you should be doing it uh, if you can't then only comment down right and uh, for sure i'll help you uh, don't leave anything because this could be an interview question they might ask you right so don't leave anything if you can't then please uh, write in the comment section those who have done they will provide you solution or in our future video i'll provide you the solutions so today what we're gonna do we will close our this chapter and that is very like very long language the basics of very long is over right now we will go to circuits so in circuits you have combinational circuits sequential circuits and then building large circuits i will try before our 30 days end to at least complete these combinational things there are many things actually for uh, sub modules are there but i'll try in basic case it won't take much time today tomorrow or three like day 25 i think we'll we'll cover this one then we'll go to multiplexer multiplexer again we have the exposure so i'll go to the big problem then arithmetic circuits again full header half header we have the exposure so we'll again try something doing something in some different way and then the important one and that is your k map circuits uh this one this is in shortcut called k map it's very important those who are in your first year currently probably you don't might be no, not knowing it but for any other guys who have already taken digital electronics for sure they know what is k map k map is a wonderful tool if you don't know it you have to know it it's it's the main thing you have to otherwise yeah like as i said it is very very important and in our community post also i have said uh, revise it because from today today we won't be using any kmap but tomorrow for sure we need to use the uh, theories from the kmap how to reduce a boolean expression using a kmap because any boolean expression is there you can make a combination circuit out of it right but it won't be a efficient way optimized way so to make or optimize or efficient means we want to use the less hardware possible to do the same work so for that kmap is the way forward because kmap will reduce the count of gate or the circuits hardware required to implement the same logics so that's why kmap is very very much important and sadly i think this year only we lost the inventor of kmap so it's a very sad news but yeah uh, he has done it tremendous job by inventing this k map okay so inside basic gears where we have already done ground we have already done let's go to nor gate i'll just briefly tell you what is happening here see uh, you can anywhere nor gate you can do in the behavioral sense right but if you do it want to do it in the gate level or in a structural level then how you need to do it one way is that here you need to define a module nor and there you need to go more depth in a transistor level in the very low code only and define how you will execute that one that's a tricky one right so to help us what Verilog have like anytime you want to code in the gate level so that time Verilog will provide you the module inbuilt there are a few primitive gates like nor nand and not nand those are already defined in Verilog. You don't need to define a module in a transistor level or switch level, we call it, right? We don't need to do it, so it's a great news. So today we'll try, uh, the, the, here there's nothing, we, we want to do nothing, just we want to do nor between n and into. So if we go with our old 
class like in our class one or uh, in our lecture one or two or three how we did we just written it like that out equal to and that's also fine is in in your behavioral sense and that is in one and it is a or nor gate so we will do the or in two and then we will use a inverter here so to use the inverter in the behavioral sense use the tilde sign and done this problem is done but we will also try to see it how to do using a nor gate so if you want to do it using a nor gate say, then you just need to write a nor so it will call the nor module which is already defined in verilog anytime you install verilog uh, compiler it will be and then it is a module right it is defined by verilog owner but it's a module so here we need to do the connectivity we need to connect things here we need to connect things so for a two input nor gate how many port we will have we will have three port two input one output and the way any gate is defined in very long and that is the first port would be your output then the following port would be your input so here what we'll do we will because for connecting we have two method by name or by order but mostly we follow by order here because we are not seeing what's the module definition of nor right but it is already known to us that here first would be the out so here this is your out so i'll write it here out and then uh, comma in one comma in two so this is also the solution so let me comment it down because we want to see a success message so i'm commenting it down i am using this one and then submit but both are true one, now we are do, doing in gate level previously we had done on the behavioral sense so that's why i have commented down behavioral one and see see we got a success okay quickly go to the next problem so here we have another gate and in another gate yeah it's an interesting one here it's a n gate and do you know the, what these bubbles are here uh, many of you know uh, many of you might be not knowing it's okay if you are in first year but if you are in a senior year you must be knowing what is this but if you don't know then I'm here it is nothing but it's negotiation or it's the shortcut actually if if I want to write it in long card then this is like this it is actually a not so you are doing your into not you are doing the inversion of your into and then you are giving input it to a gate right so it's simple in the outdoors we have something or you have seen right this one right you have end and then a bubble so it become an end so anytime we, we use a bubble it means we are using a not gate here right or an inverter here okay so i hope you can quickly do it i am not uh, spending our time here now uh, how you need to do you okay let me do it mm -hmm. You just come here, uh, you just uh, write end gate and then out, out is there and then see your in2 is negative, well, it's inverted, right? So we'll write comma in1 comma and then neg and then in2 and then semicolon and we got a success okay so let's go to two gates uh, okay so two gates is again, again very much interesting so in two gate what you need to do see uh, actually such kind of problem we have already done not using a gate but with something else so here you need to define a where right a where need to be de uh, defined and then you need to execute this thing so let me quickly help you to do it but i hope you can do it but still i'm helping you no okay okay in one into okay in one into so first is this this is a x or x nor gate it's a x nor gate okay and then a xor gate so these all things are already defined in our Verilog. So we'll write before that, let me assign a where here. So assign um, probably T1, right? So T1 will come here. T1 will come here. Okay. And then I'll write X nor and then then it would be the first output of the first gate. So it will be T1, which is the where, then comma, then in one, comma, in two and then it is done and then another xnor so this xnor will have the final out and one of the input will come from t1 output of the first gate right and another will come from in3 so, so simple right submit uh, we are missing some semicolon i guess uh, at uh, line number six what is happening uh, semicolon semicolon expecting a equal to here see it should not be a, a sign it should be where we are defining a where Oh, it got a mismatch. 
oh guys we are using two x nor one is xor right this is x nor this is x nor <laughs> so this likewise you might have some silly mistakes it's all okay and we got a success okay now let us go to a more good one and that is more logic gates i think this is you can do it uh, more logic gate they, they are explaining everything you can do it i am skipping it chip 7420 probably we have done previously but i'm not sure why they are again giving or maybe it's something different but again this is a very interesting one if you if we haven't done it please try it out it's very imp important i'm i'm skipping for now if you want me to do it you need to write it in the comment section uh, with the uh, like all the things right at, at least the something by which I can find it out. <laughs> the more detail you can give, the easily I will find it out, okay? So in our future class, I will take if you want it. But for now, try it out, okay? I want to do this one actually, truth table, because it will introduce to you why KMAP is important. But for today, we are not using KMAP, but uh, we, will, you, we will solve this problem without a KMAP today. But we will solve this problem tomorrow, again, using a KMAP. And we'll find out really does KMAP help us to reduce the hardware count or not. To design any combination circuit, we first step is to write the truth table. In one of my previous class, I have said to design a comparator, you need to write the truth table first then KMAP reduction, right? For example, let us take a very simple example and that is equality. We, we want to know if A equal to B or not. We want to know that. So for that, what we will do, you will write A and B and then probably C is our output. So if A and B equal, then we will get a 1 at the signal that hey, A and B is equal. Or else, if it is not equal, then we will get a 0. Right. So now what we will do, we will take this fellow, this fellow, and we can go for our KMAP. Those who know what is KMAP, how it will work, you know, we need to have a two variable KMAP here. We have many different type of uh, KMAP, two variable, three variable, four variable, even 16 variable or eight variable, but most common are of four variable and three variable. Two variable are not necessary because here you can see directly that this is nothing but a truth table for your X nor. So I can directly write, I can directly form a X nor here and I can give a A and B and C will give me is it equal or not. So for that's why two variable KMAPs are not so much used, but for three and four variable KMAPs are used pretty much. And here in this problem, it is C, problem of three variable. So we need to use a three variable KMAP, but for now, for today, we will not be using it. So here for this truth table, we don't know what's the application. They haven't uh, said it, I guess. So that means we have skipped the first step. We don't know the application, but we know the truth table. We have the truth table. So from truth table, we can, design our combination circuit digital circuit without knowing kmap also but that time you will use more gate hardware component than it's required but we will do that so how we go forward see anytime you have this row so in this row what is happening your output signal should be one and then we have other row also like row number three then row number five and row number seven so we have four row. The main objective of designing a combination circuit and that is at the output, we should get one, right? Only, we should get one only for this combination of our, of our input or this combination of our input or this other four. Anytime other than this four combination, if anything is coming, then at the output, we should get a zero. So if we design it for one, then for sure, if it is not this, this combination, then for sure we're gonna have zero, right? So we, we have two approaches actually, design it for one or design it for zero. And both approach have different name. If you just remember your KMAP theory there, we have product of sum or sum of product. So there, so here what we'll do, we will do sum of product or we will take the product term. This is a product term. This is a product term. How? I'll come. Don't worry. Product term and product term. Or we will take four end gate because end gate will help us to do the product. Right? We will do here sum of product. So we will take our four row product. Product means or three combination like x3, x1, x2 and x1. We'll take the three combinations 
and then we will pass them through a four input or gate and the resultant should give us one for only this combination else else what we have zero now let us take this example for the first row where we are having a one so here what is happening see your x3 is zero your x2 is one and your x1 is zero so now if i directly give this input here x3 x2 and x1 will it give me a one here no because for n gate we know everything need to be one 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 but here our combination is this therefore we will get a zero here but our main objective is that we should get a one here now tell me how should we assign input in our first end gate simple solution and that is assign x3 with a not gate so any time x3 is zero when it is reaching to the input of end gate will become one and same thing do for x1 also so anytime it is reaching to your end gate it will become one and our end gate will see one 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 and at the result and we'll get a one We'll do same thing for row three, row five, and row seven. So now we have a small doubt. I want to cl clarify that that how these things actually work. Uh, this all four gate will have their combination. Which combination will provide me for so for, so for this for second row, third row, fourth row, uh, fifth row, and seventh row, right? Now anytime uh, x three, two, and one are coming, they are coming from some global net, right? X and one they are connected to all these four gates and they will keep coming but only for those selected four combinations for example any time we get this combination for our x3 x2 and one then all other gate will produce a zero but this gate will produce a one and as this is a or gate so finally we'll get a one and we need that only right because for that particular case for that particular combination 0 1 and 0 it will get 0 1 and 0 all the gate will get a 0 1 and 0 because they are having the input from the same net but because this other three end gate are not tuned for that particular combinations they will produce a zero but as i said we will tune this gate for row number two so that it will give me one so it will produce a one and we'll get a one and that's the main logic we want to execute here using this truth uh, table so let us do it and find it out so we need to have four end gate and four end gate output need to be tied to four wire so first of all let's decide four wire so i'll write t1 comma t2 comma t3 comma t4 and then the four end gate t1 and we just need to know this this combination say are 0 1 0 so x3 will be neg, neg of x3 uh, then same of x2 and neg of x1 so i need to do the same thing for all other row also so i am doing it quickly you also do it okay so all the four gates been connected to the their combination which will produce the one for those particular combination and then we need a OR gate and this OR gate will tie to the final F which will be the output and then all the four nets so those are T1 and if we have done everything perfectly then we should get a success and see we get a success and uh, you should get like we, you should observe this timing diagram also is very important now we want to do it after using one of the step and this came up should we can we reduce any number of gate and we will we'll do it but we'll do it tomorrow but before that i have a very important thing and that is so i need your feedback like for last 23 days i am teaching you something and i don't know i how i am teaching it how my presentation skills are so i want a correct feedback from you your side so i have given a link in the description the first link please visit it and please give your feedback it's very important for me and today we have one question and that is you need to explain why a generated block is needed in Verilog what's the use of generated block uh, write down anything you know and if you know very less then google it uh, search your text and comment it down why a generated block is used in Verilog